Good morning, everybody. Hello. And welcome to Bridge Church Online. Um, this is our third week streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, so welcome. We're so pleased to have you with us. Well done for surviving yet another week of lockdown and all of the challenges it may bring. Can you believe we're in May already? No. I, I certainly don't. can't. Um, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> Absolutely. I am a bit of a Star Wars fan. Sorry for that. Anyway, let's cut to the chase. My name is Jono. And I'm Corrie. And you're joining us for the first week in our new series about mental health and well-being. And whether you feel like you know a lot about mental health or next to nothing, we can guarantee you that this series is going to be really relevant and important for you. So we're really glad that you have joined us this morning. Our time together, as you can see, is split into two parts, the second in Zoom, and details will be at the end of this session. During lockdown, there are many things that can pose challenges to our mental health, and from what I've heard from a lot of my friends, kids being at home and trying to hope and school them is one of those things. So we're going to catch up with some really good friends of ours, Amy and Neil, to find out how they're coping at home with three young children. First of all, we're going to hear from Amy about how she's coping and getting on, and then after that we'll hear what Neil has to say on the subject. Hi, my name is Amy and I'm here to just talk about life in lockdown for me. I live with my husband and we have uh, three children at home. Um, Reagan, who's eight, Lincoln, who is six, and Addison, who is eight and a half months old. And I think for me, lockdown is best described as a roller coaster. And I'm sure many people would say the same. I think it started out as this idea of, wow, I'm going to have so much time on my hands. I'm going to watch so many TV programs and films and start a new hobby and learn a language. Um, and then the reality setting that we have three children and all of a sudden they're not at school and we're having to homeschool them, which is yeah full of challenges within itself. So I think, yeah, roller coaster is the best way to describe it. I think for me, it started out um, as a bit of a novelty, I guess, just being at home together, getting into a new pattern and a new rhythm, um, figuring out what life looks like for us. Um, homeschooling has definitely been, definitely, uh, been a challenge. It uh, came with this idea of um, being structured and well-planned and well thought out. And actually that just led to stress. So we kind of have tried to find new ways um, to look at that looking at things that we can play um, and do, as well as the kind of sitting down and writing um, element of schoolwork. So I'm sure everyone is finding that a challenge too. And I think we've just become a bit more relaxed about it and more thinking about the idea that actually if they're reading, uh, writing, doing a bit of maths, then actually that's okay. Um, and our kind of mental health is worth more than maybe what the schoolwork is. I'd say one of the things that I have enjoyed is actually the slower pace of things. So even though things are busy at home, um, there's no clubs to go out to. There's no rushing off after school um, to this club or football, uh, which tends to yeah, take over our lives a little bit. So we've really enjoyed sitting down and eating dinner um, and lunch uh, together every single day. And just the conversations that that's brought up in our family has been really lovely. So that's definitely been a highlight for me. Something that I probably uh, would say that I'm missing is my friends and my family. And yeah, just like big events, um, we had like an 18th birthday and a 21st birthday. And to kind of deliver cards, but not be able to like hug that person. And yeah, just spend time with them was quite difficult. Um, and the same with our friendships. And um, that goes for our church community too. So I really missed um, coming together corporately on a Sunday and just being with people. I think Church Online is great and people are doing such a good job of um, yeah, communicating uh, through online services. But there's nothing um, quite the same as actually being together um, to worship God together. Um, and with that, I think my relationship with God has had to kind of adjust to. So I feel like I'm more busy. Um, so I'm having to really sit down and make time um, to kind of pray and ask questions and yeah get through this and I think one of the things that's also difficult is this idea that actually if we don't watch the news we can be in our own bubble and something that uh, is a bit more reality is this idea that people are losing members of their family and their friends and other events also take place um, like I've had friends that have had babies um, and also people that are going through treatment um, and just not to be there uh, physically for them has been quite tricky 
um, and has definitely taken some adaptions. So I think my coping uh, strategies have definitely been getting out um, that once a day and getting out for a walk and just really appreciating where we live um, and the fact that we are fortunate to have a garden um, that our children can play into and that we can get out when the sun is shining, uh, which has been a real blessing and something that we've loved doing. So I think that's been the main things uh, for us. Um, food, obviously, has become on everyone's radar. You know, it's crazy um, supermarkets running out of things and that's calmed down now, thank goodness. Um, so, yeah, food, planning food, cooking food, clearing up after food um, and also exercise. We've really tried to incorporate exercise into our day, whether that's been our walk, um, whether it's been um, a run, um, a bike ride with the children too um, and things like that or even doing workouts at home. And I just find that quite good for, um, yeah, just sort of settling the mind. So that's kind of been things that we've been getting up to. Um, and I'm hoping that soon we will be able to uh, spend some time with our friends, um, even if that's social distancing. But just connecting back in with other people um, is something that I'm really looking forward to. Thanks. There's no football. Kids are nuts. And the only thing I've got to keep my hair out of my eyes is this flowery band. This is terrible. <laughs> Big thank you to Amy and Neil. And Neil, I can totally um, empathise with you. I'm missing football so, so much. I might not be wearing the flowery headband, but fair play to you, mate. I guess the, the joy of having kids. Um, but it's so, it's so amazing to make it to hear stories of how real it is, and actually how a lot of us are going through struggles. Um, but it's also great on the flip side to see a lots of the positive stories out there. A um, bit like the national hero, Captain Tom. Mm. Can you believe he's raised over £31 million for the NHS? Goodness. And did you hear that you got over 140,000 birthday cards? Amazing. What would you do with all those cards? I don't know, but isn't that so nice? He's so loved. Maybe there's someone this week that you could think about sending a card to that would just really brighten up their day to know you're thinking of them. Another really good idea that I've heard that I really like, I've pinched this from Anna, who we're going to hear in just a second, is a hug list. So listen out for that, because I think that's such a good idea. Anna is a teacher, a mum, and a really great and valued member of Bridge Church. And our leader of Bridge Church, Reverend Andy Buttress, caught up with her in the week to find out how she's getting on with her kids at home during lockdown. Hi, Anna. Lovely to see you this afternoon. Hi, Andy. Good to see you as well. <laughs> Thank you for being willing to to do this uh, uh, recording. So um, lockdown, we're still in it. We are. Um, we are. <laughs> for how long, who knows? Uh, yeah. So I guess it's affecting you quite a bit because your profession is a school teacher. It, yeah, it is affecting me a lot. I think I'm used to going in every day and seeing my pupils and I haven't seen them for five weeks, which is really strange. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So you actually miss them, do you? Yeah, I do miss them. And I think we've got a system that parents can email us. So I think they're starting to miss being at school as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've have definitely you... got, we've got some of us when they're coming back. Well, that's keen. But, uh, <laughs> it is. They must like you as a school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Which is useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you miss teaching? <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, I've always wanted to teach. So just putting just uploading work onto an internet site isn't really the same thing i miss the interaction and being able to see the children make progress mm -hmm. yeah I can, I can understand that and but but i say do you miss teaching i mean in a sense i guess you are still teaching because you you're at home you're a mum i guess you're doing a bit of teaching um a little bit i'm lucky that all of mine are high school age or above so we've got high school work going on um they were learning about planets this morning we've got university work going on and college work going on all at the same time oh wow so everyone's working really hard in our house wow that, that sounds impressive <laughs> it does <laughs> so do you have to drag any of your children out of bed in the morning Normally, I would say yes. I'm known for being a fairly strict mum, but at the moment, I'm going with the flow and I'm not dragging anybody out of bed. 
well regimented no doubt <laughs> yeah 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 so what you know what what is it like you know being in lockdown as a as a, as a mom um yeah with, with children is it i mean that, are you coping are you surviving does it do your head in or is this a real joy i think it's a combination in some ways it's a joy they're all home all of the time and that hasn't been the case since my daughter went to university. Right. On the other hand, some days they're getting a little bit bored of each other. They want to go and see their friends and interact with other people. Yeah. So I think they're definitely missing friends now. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but I guess I'm lucky they all can cook and clean. So we're able to share some of the responsibilities of everyone being at home. Yeah, yeah. And how old is your youngest? 11. 11, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you you are part of Bridge Church, and, and um, yeah, can you just say just a little bit about your faith? I mean, how, how's your faith coming into play at a time like this? I think it's giving me hope that this is only a small period of time that things happen and then we move on, and that God's always there with us as we're going through these things. Yeah. So I yeah. think actually, I've had a lot of sense of peace and just hope which maybe other people haven't experienced. Mm, mm, mm. Have, you, have you been up and down? I mean, have you sort of found that some days you're feeling actually quite anxious and other days you're feeling peaceful or has it been a fairly steady calm? On the whole, it's been fairly calm, actually. And if I'm honest, much calmer than I thought it would be. I think, you know, as a family, we've had up and down days and I'm just trying to be very flexible that if the children want to spend time together, they can. And if they don't want to, they can go off in their own direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think my faith is definitely giving me that sense of peace and that this won't go on forever. Mm, sure. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Thanks. Anna. And one, one last question then. Okay. Yep. Is um, if lockdown was lifted tomorrow, what's the first thing that you'd do? Go and check on all the people who I know need me. Or that I've got a long list of people who are like, I need a hug when lockdown ends. Right. <laughs> so I think that's me in the car, driving around, giving out hugs. Yeah, that's a great answer. That's a lovely <laughs> answer. <laughs> okay. Thanks again for giving up your time this afternoon. Okay. God bless. And uh, we'll catch you very soon, hopefully face to face. Yeah, that would be lovely. See you soon. Okay, Anna. Take care. Okay. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Andy and Anna. Thanks, Anna, for sharing all of that with us. Love the hug list idea. It's an amazing idea. Mm -hmm. um, so now it's time to hear from leader of Bridge Church, Reverend Andy Buttress. Um, as we said earlier, we are kicking off um, our first in the series on mental health and well-being. So sit back, grab your cup of tea, and let's see what God wants to say to us all this morning. This message is for you. Good morning. One of the things that uh, I have been doing uh, in this time of lockdown is uh, researching my family tree. And I've found that I have some relatives way back in the 1800s called Charles and Harriet. And they had, believe it or not, 18 children. 18 children. How can you possibly have 18 children and still survive and, and, and keep sane? I mean, and what is more, they were living in a fairly small house. He was a farm labourer, like 95% of, of rural Norfolk at the time. So he wouldn't have had a huge house, he would have had a, a fairly small house. And, and the thing I would love to do is meet Charles and Harriet and say, how did you cope? What was your secret in, in having 18 children? But I, I wonder whether actually they did have a secret, whether there was something about their community and about their family that enabled them to cope. And I wonder if that thing was Ubuntu. Now, if you're not sure what 
Ubuntu is, you will by the end of the talk. And I'm going to be talking this morning about Ubuntu in the context of mental health and well-being. But before we get on to Ubuntu, just two things. The first is that as I introduce the subject of mental health and well-being, I want to say that this subject is for everyone. We all get sick. We all get sick physically and we will, none of us will go through life and never be sick. Our bodies will not be 100% well throughout our lives. And so it is with our minds. We will never be 100% well in our minds. And when we talk about mental illness, it's just a degree of difference, really. We all experience mental illness from time to time, even if that's anxiety um, or, or just feeling hopeless every now and again. That is classified as mental illness. So this, this subject of, of, of mental health and well-being is something for us all. We all need well-being. We all need that in life. And yes, the subject is for all of us. And the second thing I want to mention is that it's so important that we talk about this subject now. Ordinarily, mental health is a huge issue in our country. There was a, um, a report in 2014 produced in Leeds by NHS Digital that said that one in six people every week suffers from some form of mental illness. One in six every week. And that is before this current pandemic. The coronavirus situation has, has exacerbated people's struggles with mental health and well-being. And you know, it, it, is, it, it is known also, I think it's, it's a doctor called Antonis Kusulis from the Mental Health Foundation, who has said that um, the issues of mental health will far outrun the issues of physical health in this uh, situation, this coronavirus situation. So mental health is going to be on the agenda for some time to come. So this series that we're going to do on mental health and well-being is for you because we all need well-being and we all have some form of mental illness throughout our lives. We're not 100% mind perfect. And it is really topical at this time. I want you to have a look now at this painting. This painting was painted in 1893 by Edvard Munch. And it's called The Scream. You will see that there is a distorted nature of the background and the figure itself, which indicates a confusion, a disorientation, a wobbling and a shaking of their view of the world. Questions are raised in the painting. Is the figure male or female? Why is the person screaming? Does the scream relate to the approaching figures? Who are they? Are they known to the figure or complete strangers? Is the scream expressed or is it an inner scream? <clears throat> The main thing for me is that whatever the answers to those questions, 
the figure is isolated in their pain and suffering. They are trapped within their isolation. And the painting is quite disturbing. In the Bible, you will find people screaming. In the Bible's songbook, the book of Psalms, you will hear people screaming. Take Psalm chapter 55 verses 4 to 6. Within me, I feel my heart is breaking up. I am scared by death, which is creeping up on me. I am shaking and I feel so afraid. I wish I could fly away like a bird. Escape and be at rest from all of this. The Bible is real about mental health. And we need to be real about mental illness. It, it, it exists. But this series <clears throat> moves from mental illness to mental health, to well-being. The direction of travel is becoming well, is moving to a place, whatever our cracks and scars and wounds are, to move to a place where we experience well-being in our lives. Because we need balance, we need perspective, we need to enjoy life, we need to have fun, we, we need to laugh. It was only the other day that I was uh, walking down by the, the waterfront on my, on my daily walk and there was this uh, g g guy down there and I got talking to him and he was, he was a yacht builder and he had a yacht making company. And he was telling me that um, because of the coronavirus situation, he, he had to move his whole um, business indoors. And he, and he said to me, you know, it's so inconvenient, but my sales have gone through the roof. So we need to be people who can have a laugh, who, you know, who enjoy life. And this is the direction of travel, mental health and well-being. So where do we start in all of this? Well, a good place to start is Ubuntu. Now here you see a photograph of Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa. And he has brought this philosophy of Ubuntu into the forefront of the thinking in the West. He has written a book called No Future Without Forgiveness, based on the experiences of the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Committee in South Africa. And he uses this phrase, Ubuntu. And he says, we belong in a bundle of life. We say a person is a person through other people. Ubuntu is not, I think, therefore I am, Descartes. Rather, it says, I am human because I belong. I participate. I share. To put it another way, I am what I am because of who we all are. So my value and my worth and my identity and my well-being doesn't just come from me alone. It comes from the communities of which we are a part. And if we are not part of communities such as family, such as friendship groups, such as church, then we are in trouble because we are becoming 
isolated. We need each other for our own good. There was an anthropologist working with a tribe in Africa and he was working with a group of children from this tribe and he had managed to get some sweets from um, a, a store in, in the town and he said to the children, he said, I've got some sweets here and they went, hey, sweets. And he said, I'm going to put these sweets over by that tree. And when I say go, I want you to run and get the sweets. And the first person to get there can have the sweets. One, two, three, go. <clears throat> but instead of the children running off to get the sweets, what they did was they all took each other's hand and ran together. And when the anthropologist said to them, why did you do that? They said, Ubuntu. How could any one of us be happy if the others were sad? Now there is something really powerful here. Ubuntu. A Ubuntu community is a community that lives for each other. <clears throat> it's a community which is characterised by this sense of togetherness. An Ubuntu person is a person who is generous, who is giving, who is sacrificial in nature, who is caring, who is compassionate. All this makes up Ubuntu. And yet in the West, for so many years, we have seen a lack of Ubuntu. Dysfunctional families, broken communities, broken relationships, and such a strong emphasis on individualism, on the self. So that when we need help, where do we go to look for help? Hey, self-help. Duh. That's not Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the very opposite. And that is why there is a silver lining to this pandemic. However hard and difficult it has been for so many people, the silver lining is that there are green shoots of Ubuntu coming into our communities. And that is why, in many ways, I don't want to go back to normal. So, church, bridge church, bridge church needs to be a place of Ubuntu. It needs to be a place where people move gradually. You know, we'll still have our cracks and our scars and our wounds and we'll need to be real about those and be ourselves and be accepting of who we are because that is Ubuntu. But we need to move towards health and well-being as we give and take Ubuntu. People should actually be part of a healing community. Just being part of our community is about healing. Ubuntu. When Paul wrote a letter to a church in Thessalonica, he said, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. It's simple stuff. It's simple stuff. But this is all what contributes to Ubuntu, being part of a positive 
well-being community, a healing community, a community where you find your worth and your value and your identity in the church. And you are all the better as a person for that. And of course, at the centre of church, of Bridge Church, is Jesus. And Jesus dedicated his life to Ubuntu, bringing people in from the outside, from the margins. People who were lost, he called home. People who didn't know what Ubuntu looked like, he showed them and said, this is part of the kingdom of God, the restoration of the human person to God and to each other, the Ubuntu community. So, as we explore in the next few weeks, mental health and well-being, don't forget this word, Ubuntu. It's where we find our value, our worth, our identity and our well-being. We find it in each other. I am what I am because of who we all are. Amazing. Thanks, Andy. Had you ever heard of Ubuntu before? Ubuntu? <laughs> no. No. Me neither. <laughs> anyway, let's catch up now with a, an old friend of ours who is currently living in South Africa, working out there with a charity. And um, let's find out what this kind of Ubuntu community looks like for him in his everyday life. Sammy Hepper, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. <laughs> We've got about three questions for you, so I'm going to hand over to Sam for the first question. Hey, Sammy. <laughs> hey, um, mate. Just got to ask you, um, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and then why you're in South Africa? Sure. So, um, uh, I'm uh, Sammy, I'm from uh, Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk uh, and I've moved out to South Africa to a place called uh, Live Village, which is an organisation located in Durban. Um, it's uh, a village built for vulnerable and orphan children just on the outskirts of the city. Its uh, primary focus is to uh, rescue a child, to restore a life, to raise a leader and to release a star. That's its motto and it really yeah. stands true to its word. Um, here we currently have about uh, 200 children uh, that's within the care of the village. So um, we, we have them through from a baby through to um, right at the top end, some of them 18 and some uh, over that as they begin the process of uh, being released into the wider world, uh, some of whom have now gone on to uh, university. Um, my role here at the village uh, is working with the discipleship school that they've got. So I was a student on the discipleship school back in 2016. And uh, to cut a long story short, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, 2018, the guy that ran it uh, invited me to come and be a part of uh, the team in, in running it. And uh, so God really took me on a journey and uh, I'm here and a part of it. So there's uh, 15 students, uh, now 14, one of them um, has, uh, has been, uh, got to call back home and uh, the rest of them remain. And I work with them, uh, coming alongside them, encouraging them in their journey with the Lord. Thank you, Sammy. Oh, that's good. Uh, Sammy, you are a Christian. Do you uh, mind telling us a bit about your faith? Sure. Um, so uh, I'd say that uh, I really began to, began to take my, uh, my faith uh, for my own as, as, I, uh, as I grew older in my late teen years. Um, I began to explore it. And I live was very much a big part of that story when I first came out here uh, four years back uh, and really began to see the Lord doing some wonderful things in my life. Uh, and uh, transforming me and uh, really beginning to, to realize uh, about his goodness and his kindness, his, uh, his ever grace and mercy. Um, for me personally, uh, while, I was, while I was here during that formative time four years ago, the Lord took me on a real journey with uh, uh, realizing that uh, he's given me uh, great gifts and things, but really it's not about me. And, uh, so he began to show me what it means to walk with humility and to, to hold him as our Lord and to follow him. Uh, rather than blazing our own hearts, but uh, to take each step in and step with him, as he says in the words. Uh, and um, 
so yeah constant journey as, as we're all on and very much a learning at the moment uh, about um, what it means to, to do that on a daily basis and particularly in light of the current circumstance what, what does it look like uh, to keep in step with the spirit uh, as it talks about in Galatians uh, so that's that's where I'm at and um, as, I, as I work with the, the students here on the discipleship school here at the village um, uh, that's that's a continual process uh, hearing what he might have to say to them how, how to encourage them and, and see them grow in the, the, the men and women that they are yeah brilliant Brilliant. Well, you're in uh, lockdown, just as we are. Um, mm. You've already um, uh, said to us that um, as you're a village, your, your lockdown kind of is slightly different to um, what we're experiencing here, but you're still in lockdown too. Um, the, the talk that we have just heard this morning has been about the importance of community and how we find our own identity, uh, not just in ourselves, but in the communities in which we're a part. Do you think where you are in South Africa, in, in Durban there, um, community means more? Do, do you have a greater sense of community? Do you think the African people have a greater sense of community where you are and that it's really important? Uh, I've, I've been here for, um, we're now at the end of April, I've uh, been here for four months and uh, I've been out uh, here with two previous trips, a six month and, uh, and a month period. Um, so I suppose almost a year all in all. And uh, from my experience uh, from, from being out here, one thing that I've really noticed is uh, the, the code, is, is almost a sense of co a codependency on one another. And uh, so uh, I think a, a beautiful picture of it is the fact that uh, in, in uh, the Zulu culture, uh, the Zulu is uh, the predominant uh, people group here in uh, KwaZulu Natal, uh, where Durban's situated. They, they refer to any, any woman that's, that's older than you, that's about the age of your mother, you would refer to them as mom. So you wouldn't refer to them by their name, but in fact, you'd actually refer to them as mom. Um, so here at the village uh, with, the, with the moms and the children, um, you'll, you'll go into a house and you'll say uh, hello to mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which we don't really have in our culture um, so uh, and I think it's a beautiful thing because it's very much a, a, a community as family we, we do life together as family and your mom is my mom um, and the same with uh, same with uh, uh, dads uh, and brothers uh, you have Malume which is a uh, brother or uncle um, and uh, Baba and Gogo grandfather and grandmother <laughs> and it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, it really is and uh, I, I love it, 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 it it's uh, it's great the um uh, i think i think it it, it has a, a community feel because because you are actually calling people um by those names um which is which is just naturally family um so i think i think um uh I think community really is something that is is important in the African cultures much more than than, than in the West. Um, I mean, I think that uh, in the West we're very uh, we our, our culture is very geared around being independent, being self sufficient. I, I I will learn to provide for myself and my family, and it's very uh, um, uh, it's very focused on self, um, which really I think uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't give room for the Lord uh, because we learn to depend on ourselves and not on him and it doesn't doesn't create and foster uh, an environment of community which yeah. is something that uh, that I think that we can really grow in in the West and uh, something I'm learning about here. Sammy that's a fantastic answer and a superb illustration of, of, of this community I love it and maybe we can adopt some of that back here. I'm gonna have to end you there it's lovely to see you you're doing an amazing job keep safe we look forward to seeing you again when you return to the UK. Sammy, God bless you. Bye, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing, Sammy. And if you want to find out a bit more about what Sammy's up to, Google Live Village in South Africa. L-I-V, Live Village, just to find out a bit more. Thanks, Sammy. So that brings us to the end of this part of our morning together, which we call Life Stories. If you'd like to join us next in Zoom, we're going to have the second part, which we call Life Source. It's a time for reflecting on what we've heard in this section this morning, a time to be a bit more prayerful and reflective. So if that's something you think you would enjoy, please do come and join us. The Zoom login details will be below this post in just a few seconds. So check out the comment section, get those Zoom details and meet us in the second part just to delve a bit deeper and to reflect more on what we have been talking about and looking at this morning. Failing that, 
Meet us at Bridge Pub tomorrow at 7.45. Now, we will be playing some old school classic family games together. It's an opportunity to have a good chat together. Bring your favourite or most delicious pub drink. I will probably be bringing a bottle of Guinness with me, if I can find one. Um, but be there tomorrow, 7.45. You'll find out more information um, on our website, Bridge Church Ipswich, or our Facebook page, again, at Bridge Church Ipswich. So make sure you get on there, like and follow us to see what we're up to during lockdown. So thank you for joining us this morning. Hopefully see you in a few minutes in Zoom or at the pub tomorrow. If not, have a really good week and see you again next Sunday. See you next Sunday, guys.